right now, right now, 400 million miles away in space, there's a spacecraft circling around a comet looking for a place to land. And it's actually happening right now. And in just a little while, we're going to get a chance for the first time in history to land on a comet. And it's amazing. This blows, me, it blows my mind. I say we fairly loosely because I'm not a scientist, I'm not an engineer, I'm an artist. But these comet hunters came to me and asked me if I could help them teach people about comets. And I said, yes! But the problem was I didn't know anything about comets. But I, I was willing to learn. Um, and I had a really great opportunity to go and interview some of the world's most famous rocket scientists. And my, my mission was to pick their brain to try to figure out everything I could learn about comets. And it turns out comets are incredibly interesting. First thing I learned is that comets are like giant mountains of ice. And when they get near the sun, they get heated up and they shoot out these jets of water vapor that form around the comet and then eventually stretch into these beautiful and magnificent tails that streak across the sky. I also found out that comets are really, really old. Comets may come from the very, very, very beginning of our solar system. And in fact, if you were to get a piece of a comet and look at it and study it, it's literally like looking back in time, 4.6 billion years to the beginning of our solar system, when all of this, we were just all a swirling cloud of dust. I also found out that comets may have delivered some to all of the Earth's water. I mean, think about that. That's crazy. Every time you drink a glass of water, you may be drinking comet water. <laughs> we are made up of water, partially, right? There's a lot of water in us. So we may be made up from the stuff of comets. So you can imagine, at the end of this day, my mind was just reeling. But I had one interview left. And I was so excited for this because it was, it was perhaps one of, the, one of the world's greatest comet scientists. And he walked in and he sat down. And he looked up at me. And just before I could even jump into my questions, he said first, David, what are you going to say to make people care about comets? And I thought, this is my chance. I can tell everything I've learned. So I thought, maybe I'll talk about the instruments on the spacecraft or the diameter of the, of the comet or the surface and what we know about it. And he said, David, no. Uh -uh. People don't care about that. People care about emotion. Do you realize we are about to land on a comet and ride it around the sun? And I said, wow. It's out of all the things I've learned, science and technology and putting, feeding my brain, trying to figure it out, I, was, I ended up with this vision of a wild cowboy riding a comet across a solar system around the sun. And I couldn't believe it. And he reminded me of something that was so important to me, is that sometimes we need to focus on something a little bit different so that the facts can come through. He changed my ideas from questions of logic to questions of wonder. It's an amazing thing, this wonder. My questions became, what would it be like to walk inside the tail of a comet, to feel comet dust breeze across your face? What would it be like to be inside that tail and just experience it? Well, we had an opportunity to do something about that. And this is a picture of something I created with my colleagues to celebrate comets, the transformation that they go through from rocks of ice to these brilliant, beautiful things. And we wanted to give people the opportunity to experience that wonder, but at human scale. And so when I think about wonder, I think about it's a powerful thing. It starts in our heart and rises up to our brain. It's the mother of curiosity. It's the driving force that provides the desire for us to learn and to understand. It's where science is born. 
And when art and science come together to provoke wonder, we get to the root of why we explore, why we research, and why we've been chasing this comet for the past 10 years trying to land on it. It's like, why do we do this? Why? It's because we need to know. I believe that we're experiencing a renaissance where art and science serve to elevate each other. And if we want to raise the value of science in our culture, what we need is more art. There's a beautiful thing. I mean, nature has this beauty that deserves the attention of both the mind and the heart. And I think that the role of art is not to inform people, but it's, it's really to get them to experience something through the heart of emotion so that they can go on to ask questions. We want to plant the seeds of curiosity so that they can go on and do it for themselves. They can find out for themselves through their own curiosity. And when you see images like this, and sometimes we think that wonder is for children, right? But it's not. It's for all of us. It's actually a, an emotion that defines our own humanity. It's one of the great gifts that we get. And so I ask you, when you feel it next time, let it in. Let it start that spark that rises from the heart up to the mind because it could blossom into passion. And with passion, then that can take you to places that we can only dream of now. Thank you.